পারি আমার দেশের পারি ওই যে ঘরগুলো দেখা যাচ্ছে এত কাছে অথচ কোনো দিন আমি ওখানে পৌঁছতে পারবো না ওটা বিদেশ যখন তুমি বললে ও বাড়ি কোথাও তোমার দেশের বাড়ি তখন আমি কি করছিলাম জানো নিজের বাড়িটা খুঁজে বার করবার চেষ্টা করছিলাম কারণ কোথাও না ঠিক ওই বাড়ি আমার দেশের বাড়ি যে রেল লাইনটার উপরে আমরা দাঁড়িয়েছিলাম This scene from Komal Gandhar symbolizes one of the principal concerns in the cinema of the Bengali filmmaker Rithik Ghatak. It articulates his obsession, the anguish and agony of a person unable to reconcile to the partition of Bengal. The trauma of this division, the lament and tragedies of people uprooted from their traditional moorings, was to cast its shadow on the entire body of work of Rithik Ghatak. By the time he died at the age of 51, Ghatak had become a cult figure to many a young filmmaker in India. His work had been dominated by doses of melodrama, but delineated with such personal vision that he was acknowledged an original artist of the Indian cinema, erratic at times, but always supremely confident. And the total concept of cinema as art was his preoccupation. As he once said, the film is basically a matter of personal statement. All arts are in the final analysis, and films seem to be an art. Ghatak was born in 1925 in Dhaka, now in Bangladesh. He spent his childhood as part of a large joint family. His father was a bureaucrat, and the Ghataks lived in numerous small towns of East Bengal. To young Rithik, the images of the rivers of Bengal, the local dialects, the folklores, and the terrain were so deeply ingrained in his subconscious, he never could exorcise them from his mind. <laughs> সেই ভাই বোন দাদা দিদি মিলে আনন্দ তারপরে সমস্ত কিছু হারিয়েছেন সেই ব্যথা এবং সেই ভাষা সব কিছু বলছেন যে আমি বাইভূত নিরালম্ব আমি কি করে সেটা পাবো সেই রূপকথা সেই দেশ কিন্তু এই দেশে কি নেই নিশ্চয়ই আছে এবং একদিন হতে এর মধ্যে আমি অভ্যস্ত হয়ে যাব কিন্তু আজকে আমার পক্ষে খুব কঠিন Rithik migrated to Calcutta as a young man, where, before cinema, he was involved in theatre, acting, writing and directing plays for the Indian People's Theatre Association, which was a social consciousness movement to educate the masses. I saw a lot of people, 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 হিংসানো শান্তি চাই সেটা ভীষণভাবে ফুটে বের করেছেন এবং সেই সেট তার কস্টিউম তার সব কিছু তিনি ভেবেছিলেন করেছিলেন ইন নাইনটিন ফোর্টি থ্রি হ্যাড কাম দ্য গ্রুসম ব্যাঙ্গল a man-made tragedy of such immensity, it was to leave its scar on the psyche of every artist of that generation. Nineteen forty-seven saw the birth of independent India, unfortunately in the crucible of communal hatred, which also saw the partitioning of Bengal. Ghatak witnessed the enormity of human suffering, and through these searing experiences, a committed artist was born. He was a right-minded person before the partition. He became left-minded after the partition. He could not get out of the trauma of the partition, you see. He missed his uh, city and the Padmadi River. <laughs> আমার নদী পদ্মার ছাইরা আমি জামু কেন যাইবা খাইবার লাইগা এই শেষ সুযোগ এখনো স্মরণার্থী হ 
In this scene from Komal Gandhar, made in 1961, Ghatak confirms that his umbilical cord with his East Bengal was very much intact. No other filmmaker had been so haunted by the El Dorado of his past, a promised land he believed he had lost when the country was partitioned. But Komal Gandhar was also a requiem for the IPTA days, a reappraisal of the reasons why the IPTA movement had failed him. In his very first film, Nagorik, Ghatak's temperament was evident. The film is set in the post-war Calcutta, and it narrates a rather bleak story of the tribulations of a young man in search of a job and his gradual deprivation. <laughs> But by the end of the film, the protagonist refuses to admit defeat, resolving instead to struggle with those living and toiling in the slums. This heroic posture was to become Ghatok's favorite symbol. Nagorik was made two years before Satyajit Ray's Pothir Panchali, but the film was believed to have been lost and discovered accidentally only after Ghatok's death. He turns up in 1954 and he's in search of a job. And he is doing a job at Filmistan Studios, 300 rupees per month. He's given a small table and a small chair, uncomfortable. And he sits there and puffs at his beady and curses the Filmistan people. <laughs> and he says, this is not my place, but what, can I, what do I do? I have to do something. And after 10 months, he ultimately comes to Bimalda and says, Ki, please rescue me. And Bimalda happens to be a family friend of the Ghataks. <clears throat> and he used to know Ritik, who was called by them. His uh, uh, pet name was Bhoba, you know? So he says, all right, Bhoba, come and sit with us. He started sitting. And there, the story idea of Madhumati was taken up from him. Ghatak wrote the story for Madhumati, a murder mystery based on the theory of reincarnation. This Hindi film, directed by Bimal Roy, starred Dilip Kumar and Vajanti Mala, and went on to become a great commercial success. But Ghatak left Bombay to return to Calcutta. It was Ojantrik, the second feature film he directed, which brought attention to Ghatak's remarkable and original talent. The film is ostensibly about the relationship between a ramshackle jalopy and its driver, Bimol. And the Jalapi, as conceived by Ghatak, even in the drawings he executed, becomes an important character, almost an alter ego, with whom Bimal has an eccentric and emotional bond. For Ghatak, Arjantrik was primarily a commentary on integrating the future into our heritage, the emotional integration of acquired technology to our daily lives. <laughs> 
Although the film ends with the jalopy being dismantled and sold as scrap, the director does not lose heart and believes there is still hope of coming to terms with the machine age. Ghatak, finally, I think, to use a coin of phrases, he found a Ghatakian solution to a cinematic problem, which to me is an act of genius. And it worked very often, and at times it didn't. But the fact is that this man functioned so spontaneously, so intuitively, towards a scene, towards shot division, towards a cut, towards use of music or soundtrack, to say that it is completely codified and structured before he actually started shooting, I don't think is, is, is true. I don't think so. But this is very important, the role of intuition, which is ghatak. Notwithstanding the commercial failure of his earlier films, Ghatak launched Meghe Dhakatara, confident he had integrated the theoretician in him to his cinematic vision. For Ghatok admirers, Meghe Dhakatara remains one of his most accomplished works. Its simple storyline captures the tragic rhythm of life in an uprooted middle-class refugee family. The story of Nita, a young woman whose personal sacrifices enable her family to stand the onslaught of destitution and who is finally stricken by TB. The film has its melodramatic moments, but Kotok uses these to his advantage. ব্যাপার ছিল জি মানে প্রথমত ভীষণ আপন করে নেওয়া এবং পুরো মানে ওই যে আমাকে বললেন যে তোর যে কাশিটা আসছে ভেতর থেকে তোর মনে হবে তিরতির করে কিছু একটা গরম জিনিস বেরিয়ে আসছে ব্লাডটা যে বেরোবে সেই এক্সপ্রেশনটা তুই কর মানে আমাকে বোঝা নেই যে কেউ অস্বস্তি হচ্ছে কাশটির চোখটা তোর বড় হয়ে যাচ্ছে ফিলিংস যে না সামথিং মানে আমার যেন মনে হচ্ছে কিটা গরম বেরিয়ে আসছে এইরকমভাবে আমাকে দেখাতে না কি এবং আমি একদম টোটালি ফলো করতাম তারপরে আমার নিজে বলে তুই কিন্তু পুরুষ মানুষের মতো করবি না তুই তোর মেইলি ঢং অ্যাক্টিংটা কর
Meghe Dhaka Tara to Ghatak was an experiment with the techniques of overtone. Along with this emerged the most crucial preoccupation of his life and work, the study of Indian mythology. He delved deep into the roots of Indian tradition, discovering in them a universal dimension which he used in his films. She is moving quietly at night. There is a song. That song is Agomuni song, which is sung in Bengali houses uh, before the advent of uh, Durga Puja, which is used to welcome Durga. So he would always play uh, with the audience with this much of confidence that this is going to be accepted. It will have more tragic an impact. So that was Ritik Patel. For a filmmaker almost obsessed with a personal vision, Ghatak fought relentlessly against commercial realities, contending with producers always on the lookout for the usual formula stories and happy endings. The financier distributor of the film was a very good friend of uh, Ritrikda. He said uh, he is suspecting me uh, because he knows I am not going to yield to his demand of a happy end of the film. No. Nita can't live on him. You know that. I'm going to tell you that you can't live on him. 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 खेली <laughs> बाबा लाइफ तो एक बार हेल करे छेड़ दिए चे जो कून तो कून दो तोला सीढ़ी पे ऊपर उठे जाए कहाँ कहाँ बच्चे तो रामो ना एक तो प्राण में थे ना रे सब सुमाए हुई बुल्लोर करे ये दो तोला सीढ़ी पे ऊपर उठा रोच्चे की एक तो इच्छे ना अब आमी किन्तु मस्त चे चिलाम इडियट ना ना मुझे जोती जोती बात पे चेंज चिलाऊं ना ना मुझे बात से बड़ो भालो बशी कुकी ना ना मैं बांझ बो ना ना मैं बांझ बो ना ना तुम ही आए बार बोलो आमी बांझ बो ना 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 मैं बांझ बो ना ना मैं बांझ बो कुकी ना ना मैं बांझ बो तुम माता घर भेज गए थे कुकी We said all that was written. The distributor, financier was very happy. After all, he has won over Ritti Ghatak, little knowing that merely through dubbing, such a tragedy would be brought about. So the picture had to have its tragic end, the way Ritti Ghatak wanted. <laughs> For an artist to whom filmmaking was a passion, Ghatak never had the luxury of healthy budgets for the kind of films he enjoyed making. But he found ways to improvise and achieve what he envisaged, even when his producers could not give him the basic technical supports. Those classical songs sung by a great singer like A.T. Kanan had to be picturized without playback machines because <laughs> Ritik Da and his producer could not afford to pay the rental. So that was the type of filmmaking which has fortunately or unfortunately been Ritik Da's lot all through his career. He has never had that type of financial backing, whereas you go out to work, 
you carry all the gadgets with you. Camera is a must, film one has to buy, Ritik also have to do that. But beyond that, for obvious economic reasons, there are so many um, gadgets, equipments which he could not requisition, he couldn't work with. So there was no playback machine. There was no handy tape recorder either. A member of IPTA song squad who was also a very famous footballer, Montuda, I used to call him Montuda, little senior, used to sing those songs from a distance and I used to give my list. see when I'm very close to the camera very close almost maintaining this type of distance I would suddenly start using my hands oh this, this that so that will confuse you the disturbance in the foreground the movement of the fingers will be such that actually even if I have missed if there has been false lips it will just get lost in some kind of uh, excitement created both by the artist and the director. If East Bengal and its cultural traditions were engraved in Ghatak's psyche, Ghatak was also raised under the cultural influence of Rabindranath Tagore. He made extensive use of Tagore's songs and nowhere more effectively than in this sequence from Meghe Dhakatara. <laughs> Shubornoreka was the third film in what is referred to as his refugee trilogy. The film was set in a refugee colony of post-partition Calcutta. But to Ghatok, the film was more than just a problem of rootlessness. In the overall pessimistic tone of the film, Ghatok aimed at depicting the economic and political crisis which he felt left them all bereft of conscience or moral sense. And he hit hard at this disintegration. <laughs> In Shubornoreka, the disintegrating moral value is symbolized by Sita, the heroine, who is compelled into prostitution, and in the confrontation between her and her brother, who comes to her unknowingly as a customer.
With Shubarnarekha, an important phase in Ritik Ghatak's life also came to an end. He gave up feature film making to take up a position as vice principal of the Film and Television Institute of India in Pune. And in the two years he spent there, he left his indelible mark as film theoretician and teacher. It was a moment of great exhilaration, great discovery, and a tremendous amount of exuberance towards the act of filmmaking, the act of filmmaking. Uh, when I was there as a student, uh, he took a few classes. And what I gathered really from a person like Ghatak is that what he gave you was a sense of being. That's very important for a filmmaker, a sense of pride. The fact that you are a creator. These are important things, you know, for a young person out there who's a student, who's 19, 20, 21 years old. He contributed to making two remarkable short films with his students in Pune. One of them is Rendezvous. Rendezvous remains almost deceptively simple, but to the students of FTII, this practical workshop which gave an insight to Ghadok's intuitive approach to filmmaking, has made this short a cult film. By this time, alcoholism and illness were taking its toll, and for the next few years after his stint at the FTII, he made some documentaries and once again two unfinished feature films. This legacy of unfinished films, many of them abandoned, requiring only a few days of work left for completion, is a testament as much to Ghatak's temperament as to the fickle-mindedness of his producers. The last film he was trying to make, Wrong Air Golam, I was the hero in that film, and he was so sick. We did the outdoor shootings for just four, five, six days in a place very close to Shanti Niketan. He would go to the location with much difficulty. Actually, we used to carry him there. But once he holds the handle of the camera or looks through the uh, frame, he's a changed personality. Nobody would believe that he's so sick that even to clean his teeth, he needed assistance. And he had to be provided with country liquor at short intervals in that much of quantity. I think it is a, it is a kind of a man who is complicated, anyone who is complicated and very terribly sensitive and terribly ambitious and creative and also who do not find any outlet, you see? They have to drink. Perhaps drink helps it. In 1971 came the Bangladesh Liberation War, and with it, the hopes of a cultural unity between the two Bengals was again aroused. Khatok had been moved and inspired to make documentaries pleading for the war cause and the liberation of Bangladesh. During his lifetime, Ghatak had never travelled abroad. Now, for the first time, the artist whose lament for the uprooted and the exiled was a constant refrain went out of India to Bangladesh, to his El Dorado, to make Tita Shekti Nodir Nam. The film revolves around the life of a fishing community on the banks of the river Titash. But the river steadily dries up. Yet, 
Even as the heroine lies dying of thirst on its sandy bed, she dreams of hope, of green fields and better life. This optimism amidst despair was a favorite Ghatok position. Ironically, he was himself close to death, struggling to fight TB and his alcoholism, even as he was completing the film. During the latter years, the last picture that he, the script he wrote, you know, Galpo, Jukti, Takkor, Galpo. So he used to write it in Bimalda's house. He came to Bhavi and said, Ki, I want a place to write. Bhavi gave him a room, which is aside, Bimalda's own bungalow in Mount Mary. And there, I, my nephew, a boy, I gave him as an assistant. And I heard my, from my nephew every day, daily report, that he would buy, you see, Thara, and go to him, he would drink and write and write, till he became unconscious. Then he would wake up, wake up, and then once again, start to write. And he wrote the whole script in one month's time and then met me and said, will you listen to my script? I felt very happy. It was a kind of an honor, I felt. And I listened to the script and I felt so good. And I told him, Ki who is going to play the lead? He said, I will do. Um. Pulse, Brahmando Pulse, Ami Pulse. Jukti Tokko Ar Goppo was an uneven film, technically uncertain, but it was brutally honest and an indictment of the intellectual climate. The Bhuvan Mahajan Ar Takai, Shutaki Ne Ami Taak Chalabo, Tore Sanghe Bhai Mani Korbo. A devastating self-critique of the confusion and hypocrisy of artists, whose committedness to Ghatok was only a facade. Ghatak's passion and his prolific talent as an auteur of Indian cinema were evident not only in the use of music, sound, myths and allegories, but also in the numerous sketches and drawings which were discovered among his papers. An accomplished playwright, Ghatok left a legacy of incomplete scripts, which give an insight to the vast spectrum of his interest and passion. But to the very end, he was totally devoted to films and filmmaking. Even when he was in his deathbed, we were just waiting for the hour. He did talk about films, and he was not at all willing to die. This man wanted to live. This man wanted to make films and do nothing but make films. He was a meteor which was going to burn itself out. Burn itself out. He was not, I think, a long distance runner. He wasn't that. But he soared. He really soared in the moments that he was there. That is Ghatak. This clip is from the last film he was working on, a documentary on the renowned Bengal sculptor Ram Kinkar.
Rithik Ghatak died on 6th February 1976 before he could complete the film.